When you're using your laptop or your desktop computer, you may find at times that you are unable to access the network. If this is because malware is installed on your system, the malware itself may be causing this problem, either intentionally preventing your access to the network or unintentionally causing problems with network connectivity. Malware likes to control where you go on the network because it knows that if you download anti-malware software, you'll probably remove it from your system. And very often, malware is using a known vulnerability in your operating system to gain access to your data. And if you were to download the latest OS patch, you would be closing that vulnerability and effectively preventing malware from gaining access to that information. If this is related to malware, then your best course of action would be to use a malware cleaner, or even better, remove everything on the system and restore from a known good backup. Many browsers will show messages that have been pushed from a third-party website onto your main browser screen. And often, these might be websites that are not legitimate. For example, they might show that your antivirus subscription has expired and you have to renew it by clicking on the buttons in that message. In reality, of course, these messages are not legitimate, and by installing anything from these links, you're effectively infecting your system further. Most browsers provide options in the security settings so that you can define how notifications are brought to the screen, and you can block or allow certain sites from showing those notifications on your browser. Very often, ignoring these notifications is the best way to proceed. But if you are concerned that malware might have been installed onto your computer, it's always a good idea to run a scan just to make sure nothing unusual is installed. Here's a fake antivirus message that was received on a family member's computer. It all looks very legitimate. It tells you at the top that you must contact us immediately so that our engineers can walk you through the removal process over the phone. Your computer is disabled. And then it gives information about the problem. It talks about what virus is identified and gives you a phone number to call to solve this problem. In reality, of course, this is not a legitimate virus. This is a complete hoax and no software has been installed onto your computer. In reality, of course, the only thing this malware is doing is displaying this message on your screen. If you were to delete this executable, you would effectively be removing this so-called malware from your system. But if you call the number, they will entice you to give them money to unlock your computer or to subscribe to whatever service they are supposedly offering. This often requires some specialized removal techniques to be able to get rid of this from your computer completely. In this example, the best solution might be to delete everything on your computer and restore it from a known good backup. Here's a better view of this fake antivirus alert. You can see that it looks legitimate and it tells you that it has found a number of different viruses. This one has detected Trojan spyware known as FinanceTrack2.dll. Normally, the information that we are storing on our computer is safe from being changed or modified when we are not using our PC. But unfortunately, you might find cases where system files might be renamed or files that you've previously saved are suddenly not available where you left them. There might also be cases where files that were assigned to only you now have different permissions associated with them. Or you may try to access one of your previous documents and find that the access is now denied. All of these are highly unusual, should not be occurring on a normally running system, and are almost certainly the case of malware being installed on this computer. The best practice, of course, is to use a malware cleaner or delete everything and restore from a known good backup. It seems that our newest operating systems are showing us more and more notifications. Most operating systems give you a bit of control over what's shown, and you may be able to modify the notification options on your operating system. On Windows, you'll find these in the System app under the Notifications option, and you have the choice to enable or disable all notifications, or go into Individual Applications and choose which apps you would like to receive notifications from. If you turn off all notifications, you might be missing important information from your system services. So it might make more sense to control this on an app-by-app -app basis to enable or disable exactly what notifications you'd like to see. By default, most operating systems will download updates and install them automatically when needed. But if you were to look at Windows Update on your computer and find that it was not updating things properly, then you'll have to do a bit more troubleshooting. Since all of these are being downloaded from the cloud, our first step will be to look at our network connectivity. 
Do we have a good connection to the internet? And are we able to download files from other third-party websites? We might also want to look at any firewalls or filtering that might be in place, just in case someone has added a new rule to the firewall that is preventing access to Windows Update. And some environments are limiting the amount of bandwidth you're able to transfer through the network, so you may find that the updates for the operating system are simply too large for your existing network connection. Windows does include a troubleshooter to look for network connectivity for Windows Update. You can find this under the Settings, System, Troubleshoot, and choose the option for Other Troubleshooters to find out what is happening with your Windows Update process. If it's able to find any problems, it will identify that it has detected an issue with Windows Update, and it will try to resolve that problem automatically in the Windows Update Troubleshooter. Pop-up messages in a browser can look as if a legitimate application is asking you to perform a function. This is a very easy way for malware authors to get their malicious software onto your computer. Most new browsers will prevent these random pop-ups by having a pop-up block feature built into the browser itself. You could, of course, disable that feature, but most browsers will have that capability turned on by default. But if you are using a modern browser and still seeing these messages, this might indicate malware, so you might want to perform a scan or delete everything and restore from a known good backup. You've probably found yourself surfing around the internet and received a message in your browser that says your connection is not private or something very similar to that. This indicates some type of certificate problem, so we might have to do a bit more research to determine why this is occurring. Most browsers allow you to click or right mouse click on the lock icon associated with that HTTPS connection, and this will bring up a view of the certificate on that system. This provides us with additional details about the certificate, for example, who issued the certificate, when it expires, and more details about how this certificate was originally created. It may be that we are using a different fully qualified domain name than this certificate was created for, and that creates a mismatch when you connect to that site. Or it may be that the digital signature on this certificate is not from a trusted certificate authority. And since the browser doesn't recognize the certificate authority, it presents you with a message saying that this is an untrusted connection. And because the date and time is important in these certificates, you have to make sure that your local computer is also set to the right date and time to prevent any type of mismatch between your computer and the certificate. A very common problem you might see is someone who is typing in a Google search into their browser, but the results that come up on the next page are not from Google. This is referred to as a browser redirection, where you are expecting to go to one website and you end up being redirected to a completely different website. This could certainly be related to a website misconfiguration, but almost always this is related to some type of malware. The malware authors are redirecting you to a site where they are expecting you to either download additional malware or present advertising that they can use to make even more money. The process for cleaning this is the same as any other malware infection. We can use an anti-malware or antivirus cleaner, or even better, we can delete everything and restore from a known good backup. One of the most challenging problems to troubleshoot is someone saying their system is slow. This could be a problem with many different resources on this computer, so it might take some time to perform troubleshooting. If the issue is related to browser performance, we might want to confirm that we are using the latest browser and that we're up to date with the latest versions. You might also want to see how many tabs are open in any particular browser. The browser on this screen has almost 30 different sites that are open, and there's so many that they're now just a single icon at the top of the screen in each one of the tabs. Sometimes cleaning out your browser can resolve a number of these performance problems. So you might want to go into the cache and the cookies inside of your browser, clean those out, delete any of the temporary files that are in the browser, and then restart the browser session. You might also want to look at your task manager to see the performance of your browser, how much CPU it's using, how much memory, and if it's accessing any of your disk, which certainly could be slowing down the performance. I visited sites before that suddenly slowed down my browser to a crawl. And when I brought up my task manager, I saw that my CPU utilization for the browser was at 100%. This was because this website had a crypto miner running in JavaScript. When I left that website page, suddenly my CPU dropped back down to zero. And it could be that the issue is related to this specific type of browser. 
You might want to have different browsers installed on your system so that you could try different browsers against the same website and see if you get the same performance issues.